frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Captain, there appears to be some sort of mistake. I was thought I was being beamed down to the planet with my so I could rejoin my girlfriend. But instead I seem to find myself in this strange planet. I'm told that I am supposed to be reading poetry? That does not seem logical, but I will report back once I make my findings. You want me to read this? Oh. Science. My favorite subject. I'm glad that they gave me this poem called Science to read to you. Science. Green is the chlorophyll that fills the greenery, seen so simply as a stain upon a knee. Microcosms assemble in a grand design no one can see except right up close. But then no one would see really what is going on on the outside, which is what really counts. Chlorophyll stains are really a chore to clean, not a galaxy of worlds just beneath the surface. Who has time to think about cells and tiny building blocks that form DNA, molecules, or life? Or even if so, who would look at the hydrogen and oxygen vapors so crossly? An elephant or knight in shining armor can more readily be appreciated in the heavens. While here below they look upon the sedimentary formations more as something with which to do harm. Maybe the cold logic of science is more humane after all is said and done but much less interesting that one looks like a dragon see the tail and the rest of the spine i've never seen a dragon i have on barangaria seven but i've never stopped to look at clouds before Logic is a wreath of pretty flowers which smell bad. Don't you think I know that? Dr. Severin is insane. I found this book on this planet is of some interest. Apparently, someone left a note for me in the aforementioned book. 
I don't know why, but obviously the logic of it indicates this poem was intended for me. The name of the poem? Private Logic. Here in the privacy of this mind of mine, deep thoughts are thought, or so I thought, until one of them disagreed with another. The one on the left thought it was right. The other one knew that it was right. There I was caught in the middle, and here I thought, with those deep thoughts of mine, that I was of one mind. Yet, now I can't help but think that the logic of it all escapes me. How close will we come to the nearest Klingon outpost if we continue on our present course? One part six, sir. Close enough to smell them. That is illogical, Ensign. Odors cannot travel through the vacuum of space. Opportunity? Now listen, Spock, you may be a wonderful science officer, but believe me, you couldn't sell fake patents to your mother. I fail to understand why I should care to induce my mother to purchase falsified patents. Can you give me a warp aid? Aye, sir. And maybe a wee bit more. I'll sit on the warp engines myself and nurse them. That position, Mr. Scott, would not only be unavailing, but also undignified. I tell you, you better come on back down. Rackos, put the bag on your captain. Why would he put a bag on our captain? Kidnapped him, you want their lives. How many others have you done this to? What gives you the right? The hand of life and death. Fascinating. Captain, I'm reporting. I have made another discovery here on this strange planet. I found a tricorder. Obviously an earlier model. I'll try to see if I can make it work and report back as soon as possible. Yeah, this thing does not seem to be working, but I found a clue in a book on geology that I found in this strange planet. Inside the geology book, was another one of these poems. <clears throat> this one entitled The Rights of a Rock. A rock has no rights, but stored within, it does have power. Not power to heal, none to feel, it has no compassion. At least, not for humans. A rock has no power, no energy of its own. A rock does have energy, but only in the hands of human agency that can sculpt her into a thing of beauty or launch him at thine enemy. That's what they have to say on this planet about rocks. And as for the tricorder, eh, trying to 
figure out how it works. It's very old technology. <laughs> Captain, I have discovered the possibility of intelligent life on this planet that you sent me to instead of the one where my girlfriend was waiting for me. I found the evidence in this book that uh, is in the library left by uh, the creatures that inhabited this planet. I'll report later on on, uh, on my findings. Yes, intelligent creatures, apparently, very similar to ones found on Earth. <clears throat> I believe they were referred to as uh, whales, swimming sperm whales in particular. Inside the aforementioned book, I found another poem, as if someone was leaving clues for me. The name of this poem, Airhead. Air blew out of his air hole. Was it a sigh? How sad was the sound, as sad as when it was heard by all of us. Time and again we sigh, we cry, we blow out again. What, can, what we can, what is in there, again and again, until there is no more. Jim, is there anybody there? Listen, I think I've, uh, I thought I was losing my mind, and, uh, but I definitely found my brain. Well, I don't know about that, but I did find my ears. I got, I found the ones that, uh, go with my outfit. I'll report back more as I learn more, assuming that I do. Well, I found my Spock ears and, curiously enough, a book on human anatomy. <laughs> and I thought I had found intelligent life on this planet. Inside the aforementioned book on human anatomy, I found another one of those those poems. 
This one is entitled ENT, which for those of you in the medical profession know, refers to your, your ears, your nose, and your throat. Here goes. ENT. Your mouth is connected to your brain, filled with a hundred bits of pieces of things, unconnected, except to something. And so what? Your ears are connected to your head, at least most of the time, through which a torrent flows of waves and sounds, all connected by a slender thread. But to what? Your throat is connected to everything, flowing through, unfettered, with too much, unconnected to anything except for what there is. Sounds logical to me. Are you all right? Yes, I believe no permanent damage was done. What happened? The occipital area of my head seems to have impacted with the arm of the chair. Another experiment proving there is such a thing as cause and effect even on this planet, this crazy planet, with these poems that I keep finding scattered all about the place. This one, in this book that seems to have a whole lot of them more so than the other books. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Listen. Steady is the cadence. Life forces. The beat without reason but rhyme. Listen to it. It drones on nonstop. At least for now. Without effect or cause that we I'm pretty sure, although I haven't tested the theory, <clears throat> that this planet also has gravity. What goes up must come down. Let's let's do an experiment to find out. Ah! <sighs> Hello, Enterprise. Are you out? Are you up there? Are you anywhere? I think I might need. I might need bones to help me out here because I stabbed myself and I dropped a rock on my foot. Just because I'm logical does not mean that I'm smart. <laughs> See what I mean? Fascinating. I finally got the last word. Human beings do not survive on bread alone, you poor soulless creature. 
richer, but on the nourishments of liberty. For what indeed is a man without freedom, not but a mechanism trapped in the cogwheels of eternity? You offer us only well-being. Food and drink and happiness mean nothing to us. We must be about our job. Suffering in torment and pain, laboring without end. Dying and crying and lamenting over our burdens. Only this way can we be happy. Captain, I think I've discovered the truth about this planet and why you sent me here and not to the one where my girlfriend was waiting for me. I'll let you know later what I find or what I have found. I'm not sure I even want to tell him. I found the truth in this little book, which is filled with haiku, but Poem I found is not haiku. It's another one of these things. I also found a copy of it in here. So it must be valid. Well, let me try to get the right side up first. The name, of course, is Truth. Blinded for a moment, I started, then began again. Sighted for a time, I waited, then began again. Hidden for an instant, I searched, then resigned again. To the truth. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Captain Kirk. Do you realize that the aim will, of course, be very crude? I don't care if you hit the broadside of a bar. Just hurry, please. Captain, why should I aim at such a structure? Come on, Spock. Just get out of the job. at all. It's as if you're made of wood. Well, I tried that on one of the aliens that I found on this planet. The Vulcan mind meld, you've heard about it before, but it didn't seem to work. <sighs> However, I did find in, tucked away in this book, another poem. which was also found in this one. They all seem to be in this book right here. This poem <clears throat> is about, well, it's entitled Mind Meld. Here's how it goes. Sit quietly, ponder deeply where your aura is to go, projected into the astral plane where others are waiting, themselves pondering, waiting for someone, something to join them, to tell them where they can go, where that place is found, where great minds think alike. I just realized what I can do is be mind out with you. With you, yes. 
my thoughts and your thoughts they are uh well maybe you don't wanna maybe that's not such a good idea you may not wanna meld with these thoughts you never know where they can get a little crazy okay well <clears throat> This concludes another episode of Poeticus Interruptus. Yes, that's right. I knew it all along. <laughs> I don't need a fucking mind meld to let me in on it. Thank you once again for joining me for another episode of Poeticus Interruptus. I hope you have enjoyed this. We are now are going to return you to your irregularly scheduled programming. Scotty, beat me up. Beat me up, Scotty, beat me up again. Something's trying to leave my face. Beat me up, Scotty, save my head. Make you a tag for the upper space. Let's go see. You'll never work like this. Oh. Just how it hung <laughs> Out there in outer space <laughs> The only one around there Worth this pay Was the engineer of the place Scott, just turned your pay for the week Was Mr. Scott Was the man Scotty, he was the man I got rights You got nothing Was Scotty do this Scotty do that